Hi and welcome. Let's build a Cubase template from scratch. And just in case if you want to download this thing right away, head over to my Audio Artist Academy, then check the classroom and then head into the tools and resources module and download that thing. So first of all, there is something important that we quickly have to talk about. Why a template? There seems to be two camps. One camp is the people who love to write music as efficient as possible. So they want to load, for example, all their orchestral instruments into that template so they can dedicate their time to only focusing on writing music. And then there is this other camp of people who like to be a little bit more, let's say, open minded and ready for inspiration to hit on whatever sound or sample library they want to use. Therefore, they do not import or have any sounds or sample libraries ready when they launch their template. But disregarding the way you work, it always makes sense to set up a template because there are simply a few basic elements that you need to set up over and over and over again when you start working on a new piece of music. And this will eat up a lot of time. So let's go. So the first thing you do is open an empty session and then you head straight to this little slash button here and click it. And now we have a split view of our arrangement window. So the next thing you can also set up tracks with a right click here, but I simply hit T and then we head over to more tracks and we set up a tempo track here. Then we hit T again and we set up a signature track and then we hit T again and we pick the ruler and add this track. And now we select all of these three tracks that we created and drag them up into the upper window. Next thing we do is because we don't need to see the input output channel folder here, we hop over to visibility and tick this little button here so they are disappearing. We go back to the inspector and then we just move this line up a little bit so it looks a little bit more nice and tidy. We just click bars and beats here and set it to seconds. What I like to do then is grab this ruler here and set it all the way to the top. And now we can see the bars and the time. Great, so now we got this thing set up. The next thing I want to do is set up folders for all the instruments that we are going to use. In my example, I just want to have a basic orchestral template, but we don't want to load any instruments. I'll leave that up to you guys, what you prefer working with. And we set up empty contact instances instead. Okay, so I hit T again, I click the folders. I just go up to four, leave this empty. Then my first folder will be named strings. Second one will be brass. Third one will be woodwinds. And the last one will be percussions. And then I would always like to use colors for my instruments here. So I'm heading up to this button here and I'm picking some kind of like a blue color for my strings. For the brass, I pick red. The woodwinds will be green and the percussions will be yellow orange kind of like thingy. Okay, next step is hitting T again. I go to the instrument tab here and pick contact seven. You can pick whatever sampler you prefer, of course, and then go up to five and hit simply hit add track. And once we got these tracks loaded here, I shift click them and then drag them over to the strings folder here or inside the strings folder. And now I get five instances of contact ready to be filled with string instruments. And just quickly want to mention, I like to work with instrument tracks and not using rack instruments or a so-called multi-temporal setup and then connect this all to MIDI tracks and so on. The simple reason is I can deactivate any track that I like. You can't do that with a full multi-temporal setup of let's say a contact instance filled with 16 instruments. The other reason is it is very simple to automate each track individually without digging around in the MIDI tracks and the contact outputs. And in general, it doesn't feel cluttered. I just see the tracks that I'm working with and that's it. But of course, feel free to use whatever works for you. All I want to give you here is a little bit of inspiration on how to get into the working process as quick as possible. So the next thing is a little bit of a bummer because sometimes I like to recolor tracks or import tracks into a folder and uh, sometimes a little bit tricky to see what color exactly I used. So Steinberg, please fix this. It would be really cool to see what color you actually used. So it's not really like a problem to highlight this color so you can just move on and select the other colors and just apply the same color to these other tracks here. 
So the next step, I leave a little bit to you if you want to name these tracks already or leave it a little bit empty or create 10 or 20 more tracks into these folders. The most important thing is that you have the empty contact instance set up so you can fill it with whatever instrument you prefer. So also let's do this with all of the other folders in here. I create five more tracks for the brass, highlight them, drag them into the folder, create five more for the woodwinds, highlight them by shift clicking them dragging into the folder and the same for the percussions i also want to recolor them and now i got the first part done with my instrument set up here so the next step that we are going to do is open the mixing console by hitting f3 and what we we'll want to do here is again shift click and highlight all the contact instances that are there for our string instruments here and once we highlighted them all we just hit right click and then select add group channel to selected channels now a prompt opens and i can name this for example strings then i say add track and as you can see here, it created a group track or a bus track that is just there or just transmitting or letting through the signals that are coming from these contact instances here that we set up in our strings folder here. So if you add new instruments, for example, you want 10 or 20 more contact instances and you want to fill them and load strings instruments into your session, please be aware that you highlight them all again. So let me just create this. Let me just create five tracks more here. Ignore the colorization right now, open the mixer again, and then you want to highlight these additional instruments. Hold down Shift and Alt, and then you see that this little Q-Link thing is highlighted. And then while holding the Shift and the Alt key, click in here and assign them to the group's strings. Now we also want to do that for the remaining instruments here for our brass section. Highlight them, right click, add group channel to selected channels. Name this brass, same for the woodwinds and the same for the percussions. Next step would be to take care of the colorization if you want. Now the next step is very essential to me because when you work with a lot of tracks, things simply get lost once in a while. So what I want to do is hop over to the zones here, open this input output channel thing and hit this very right dot here on the stereo out and also on the strings, the brass, the woodwinds and the percussions. And let's zoom in a little bit here on the tracks and move my head out of the way. And now you can see that all of the tracks are available here and no matter how big or small this entire window is or how much you scroll around, your bus tracks and your stereo out will always be stable and visible on the right side. And now you can spice this up even more. So let's say, for example, you always use virtual mix rack, for example, to set up a standard compressor that you always put on your orchestral instruments for each of these sections. You simply go in here and, for example, pick this compressor and leave the setting like this. And then you're just copying this over like this and also let's say you want to have a reverb set up for example seventh heaven and you want to use a very specific setting for your strings for example the senders hall at this mix rate and also with a pre-delay of whatever and then you want to use another reverb instance here for the brass and so on you can of course put this all into here without doing it all over again. Also, for example, you have a go to equalizer you want to use. You can simply drag and drop this down or whatever, you know, load your favorite EQ, for example, here, the infinity EQ or whatever, and then just also copy it over to all the other tracks. So you have this available. And also I would always recommend to have like a little mastering limiter here on the stereo bus just to prevent ear damage. And you can, of course, always set them to like some standard setting here so you got at least a little bit of mastering flair when you're writing your music. So when you worked out all of this stuff, of course, it happens that you also once in a while see group tracks or even your input and your output channel reappearing on your arrangement window. However, I don't need to see my group tracks on my arrangement window. I want to focus on the arrangement as the name implies. And then I simply hop over to the visibility tab and tick this little button here and I have my group tracks disappearing from my arrangement window. 
so I can focus on my instruments again. So in the meantime, I also colorize the rest of the tracks here to keep it all in the same format and what you want to do next or what you can do next before we are going to save this as a template. We're just going to close the folder. So whenever you open a new session, then you just look at a clean window. And to be honest, I find this very important because if my loaded up template would look something like this, I would suddenly instantly for some reason be focused on the percussions or seeing some brass instruments when I had the idea of writing a string melody first. And chances are there that you get distracted by what you're seeing on screen and suddenly you forget your thought or you're just starting with something completely different and I don't want this to happen. So now most important step to save your template and make it available for every session that you want to work on, you simply hop over to file and you say save as template. And in here you can name this for example orchestral test and then hit OK. And assuming you would start a new session right now and this would be a closed window, you can simply hit Control N for a new session. And in my more tab here, you can see that we have orchestral test available as a template. So every time you want to work on a new track, you pick this template and then it will be a newly created session with the default stuff that we just applied here and you're ready to go write music. So as said before, hop over to my Audio Artist Academy. You can join in for free. Then hop over to the classroom and check the tools and resources module. Last but not least, I would be happy if you leave me a like, subscribe to my channel, and also let me know how you like the template by leaving a comment down in the comment section. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much for checking out my videos and looking forward to see you in the Audio Artist Academy.